I am 51 years old. I've been a practitioner of Okinawan Shodin Ryu Karate since I was seven. There were some who would call me a master. I assure you, I am not. I believe that the true expert is someone who still has a student's heart and a beginner's mind. This year, to celebrate turning 52, I'm setting out to learn from 52 other disciplines, each from its own master. Some things I've tried before, others, I'm a first-day beginner, like anyone else. 52 weeks, 52 new skills. I'm William Christopher Ford, and this is 52 Masters. I like to start always with um, games of opposition to really understand the essence. I want two things <laughs> in training. First, to be fun. Okay, like to make sure that, that we don't forget what we do that for, right? Um, and then uh, to be safe. Okay, and so if we can do those two things, then uh, there's going to be a lot of situations where you're going to be able to, you know, try skills and, and be relaxed and, uh, and and learn, of course. Like one one emphasis for me is to to have people understanding that uh, one of the big factors of performance is to be relaxed. So I want the training to be that way. So let's start going. Ready? Hands by your face. What I want you to do is have one person. And since we have a lot of space, we're going to use this space. I want you guys to move around. I don't want you to be stuck in, in one place. Um, so, but the idea is to react to uh, what's coming. So always a leader and a follower. And then we'll switch it over. OK, so for about a minute, number one, we'll be leading. If I go back, then you come fall. As soon as I move, then that's it. You adjust. If I move to the side, so I roll the same thing, and then just take the space, okay? You're giving some opportunities to react, to, you know, receive, look, take some visual cues, and then make adjustment and, and, and react, okay? And that's the key. And the more you do, the better it is. Not too far away, maybe like, maybe like half a foot away from, um, you know, like a jab distance, right? And you want to keep observing this just to make sure that you can reach the cap you know, as soon as you start feeling comfortable and make your first move right here, then you can start you know, picking up and creating some space right here. Because those are problems that you want to solve, right? Mm -hmm. So here. And whenever you have this space right here, you know that you are controlling it. And that's really the thing that you do when you're leading. Like you're creating those moments where sometimes you make the person come very, very close, sometimes very, very far. Those are situations in the, in the competitive or uh, moments where that you want to create because you want to dictate this this exchange right here uh, distance is the key so finding ways to mess up with the opponent's distance is the key right so that's what i want you guys to you know, try doing okay sorry let's go yeah. as a leader i want you to be aware of where you are and how much you're pushing forward and back okay um this is the type of drill where Really, after a minute like you should start like feeling that you you know you're, you're getting winded if you if you put enough intensity into it. So it's a very simple drill, but you can take it to any level of uh, challenges. I can feel okay. in my legs. Yeah. 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 Is it working? So you all yeah. It feels great though. If, if you happen to be kicked, just move with it. Mm -hmm. Kick me again. Kick me again. And you can even drive it through more if you want. You just move with it, yeah. okay? So being light on your feet, means that whatever impact you're going to get is going to be less important than it would have been if you step and wait for it and make like a strong defensive move, right, where you take all the impact. So kind of go with it. Yeah. Get out. Get out. So take one. It doesn't matter. Because it's going to happen. But go with it and see what you can. Go with it and then go with it. That's it. That's it. Nice. That one's already. Don't come back. Don't come back. Right. Yeah. Okay. Because you did the right choice. Right. I was out of here. Right. Or if you're waiting for me, here. Next for a second. I'm running. Right. I'm going to leave. Right. All I have to do is take one step. Right. Okay. That's it. Good. Yeah. Okay. A lot of you guys come from Italy. So I don't have to tell you how much damage your kick does, right? <laughs> you experience that, you know? Um, and you can only take so much, right? So the goal, so 
forty punch. It's to avoid being kicked. As much as you can. And don't be shy. Like <laughs> go for it. Okay? Not gonna let him kick me once. <laughs> That's fine. Why? I mean, all you can do is you know reduce your expectations a little bit, right? Instead of starting low, shoot high. Shoot high. And then, well, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> so you know, it's it's see what you can do. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. So one person punches, and defends from the kick, and the other one trying to uh, reach with the kicks. Uh, but the things I like you guys to try to implement as much as possible it's to be busy with the punches, to fake, to fire combinations, okay? To fire combination to overwhelm the kicker, and when the kick comes, deal with it and keep coming back. So it's not like I'm punching and you know, uh, and then whoop, I'm, I'm waiting and stop punching again. No, no, no. It's I'm here, and then, then I want to go here, right? Because once the leg is starting to move, then I know there's some uh, there's some openings for me uh, for my punches. Okay, so don't fire two punches and stop. No, that's building combination. Sounds good. my right leg, so you have this punch right here, then I can have the same axis rotation right here and reach with this right leg right here. Okay? And that's what I want you guys to start playing with. So as you're punching, you're gonna have to do one thing and that is protecting that leg. And you can punch and fire combination just like you were doing. Uh, but when you so when you fire those punches the way you were doing, now you're gonna have to be careful at this, right? Okay? okay? So what can you do? Like what is the defense when I punch? What do you find? Just move, okay? Right. So here, All right. All right. and I'm gonna wait to see if I can make him, you know, fire the skip and then to go in, right? So my goal is to try to avoid this leg as much as possible. Okay. And it's a, it's a you can do both, uh -huh. okay? You can move both, but oh. that means that uh, really what you, if you, this, this left leg is the one that you are baiting your partner with uh -huh. when you're punching, then don't bring it too close to the other. Okay? Keep it right in front right here, right? Because I know he's gonna have to kick with this range. And as soon as I take it away, I don't even need to put any weight on it. Okay, I can just bring it back and punch. Okay? So, uh, in terms of time of delivery with your punches, uh, as soon as you feel like the kick is coming here, boom, just move this leg back and, and keep firing and uh, delivering those punches. So, is it going to work all the time? No. But the one thing that you have to keep in mind is you don't need to bring this leg any further than this one. Mm. Okay? Don't start too early either, right? So, one thing you can do is, you know, maybe it's going to judge a little bit and then I can come back. You know, maybe not this time. Okay? Maybe I'm going right. You can go left. Okay? And then... So, in terms of combination, this is what I want him to do. I want him to keep that leg. Because okay. I know when he's kicking this leg that if I'm doing good defense, then by the time he's retreating, then I can have my punches coming right. Okay? So, are you going to start this? Sorry, yeah. sir. So let's keep switching. So, the pace doesn't come just because we deliver more, because we're not looking for, you know, knockout mm -hmm. as much. No. It comes because the routes are short. Mm -hmm. That's it. Interesting. Uh, look at MMA versus boxing. They fire a lot more uh, in boxing, okay? But in MMA, it runs at five minutes. <laughs> so it kind of doesn't make sense, right? But they know that, you know, when you start getting tired, that's when you make mistakes. And then, you know, not only you have to worry about this and this or this or that, uh, but, you know, taking down and, and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, so that's it for that. Okay? So let's switch uh, around. So you're punching me. And, uh, yeah, I know, it's like, 
Yeah, that's what you want to do. That's exactly what you want to do. And it's really what you do. You read it, though. Yeah, really. Yeah, How much more was it to defend from the punches? Now that you had to focus on kicking as well. Is it easier? Was it harder? Easier, because you have yeah. all now to get them off. Yeah. Yeah. You have one more tool to defend. Yeah. Yeah, there's one more thing that you want us to worry about. Yeah. So yes, that's throwing down the, the planning process, the execution process. And so those are the things that you want to be able to, to do. So what happened lots of the time, I mean, you put a lot of pressure on me. Like, you fire a lot of uh, punches, right? Yeah, I missed a lot. But, uh, <laughs> I, wanted to I fired a lot of kicks, I missed a lot of kicks too. <laughs> well, and when I was punching, I was missing a lot. But, but you, hit, you hit me more times with your kick than I did with your punch. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I noticed. It's like and uh, w so why? Like, did you notice something I was doing that allowed me to do this? Uh, you had a good timing and you were consistent and you just, you never stopped. Okay. You know, you, uh, <clears throat> you missed, you missed, you missed, you hit, you missed, you missed, you hit. You know, yeah. so I never saw any frustration on your part, you just played the mm -hmm. Yeah. Played it out. Yeah. Got the tigers. So, I, I mean, really what he says is, is crucial to me. It's like, there wasn't any frustration. They actually was. <laughs> there was, I mean, it's, yeah, I get frustrated, but it's, you know, it's kind of like a motivation that I had, but it's also, I try to make it as part of my plan. Like, if I get touch, I get touch, okay? And that's it. And if I miss, I miss. It's part of the game. So, move, 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 do it again. Beautiful. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take another step. I want you to come down like that, but you're going to kick, uh, you're going to throw a three kicks around. So the first one you come, one, two, and you bring it back. Oh, sure. Okay. So you have to be one, two. So, to say one more, just let you take that and go to the same So that was a uh, excellent workout and training. Uh, we were sweating and breathing hard, and uh, my my legs definitely were burning at times, especially when we were hopping around and just just moving so much. But uh, fantastic training! Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and everybody had a good time as well. And. 
Um, I, I really like the uh, the real like sidekick. Um, say it again in French. The chasse. 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 Um, a lot of things I've learned today I had never seen before. You know, first of all, it's the first time I've ever done savate ever in 47 years. So, uh, you know, big thanks to crew Phil Aslaxen for introducing me to Professor. Absolutely. You know? yeah. <laughs> but I had actually heard of you over the years through um, you know, the various magazines and whatnot. Um, there was another gentleman named Daniel... Uh, Duby. Daniel Duby. Uh, he was another gentleman that I read about, and you were the other one. And of course, okay. you know, being a uh, comic book reader, I was familiar with a character named Batroc Zeliper, who was uh, one of, uh, I believe, Captain America's uh, enemies yeah. in the comics. And, uh, you know, in more recent years, he's been uh, reincarnated in the Marvel Universe, uh, played by uh, one of my heroes, George St. Pierre. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> yeah. Fantastic martial artist. <laughs> but I think he's a karate guy, and, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, and I don't know if he's ever actually studied Savat. But... Um, how did you start studying this beautiful art? Um, I got lucky enough to be introduced uh, with uh, like a free program, um, you know, being uh, in the city where, where I grew up, mm -hmm. uh, Toulouse. Um, I was first actually introduced to it through um, a TV show, mm -hmm. uh, Les Brigades du Tigre. Okay. And um, it's a you know, special uh, police force uh, oh, touring. Okay. Okay. I, right at the edge of the First World War. Mm. Um, and that's really when Savat, well, I think, was the most, um, uh, the most famous in France. I mm. mean, it was recognized as, you know, the, the mean of self-defense and, okay. and fighting uh, all. Um, you know, there was boxing in England, of course, pro, and then uh, Savat in France, mm. uh, which was, you know, again, um, really famous with a lot of, you know, places in Paris and, and a lot of fa famous writers such as... Uh, Théophile Gautier, Alexandre Dumas, uh, who wrote the Three Musketeers, oh, yeah, they were yeah. journalists at the time, and they were, um, you know, the one reporting on some of those uh, interesting. those fights. Interesting. Um, do you know how it first came about? How it was developed? How uh, the art of Savat uh, came into France and was developed? Well, what influenced it? So, what influenced it is, I think, some uh, street fighting techniques, mm. um, and, you know, one guy uh, named Charlemont was the most famous, so in 1877, he just put together all those and added some uh, cane mm. uh, fighting techniques right, right, right. to make it a comprehensive uh, self-defense uh, system. Nice. Uh, but, I mean, there were other people before that developed this, this kicking system. Um, and then around 1820, I think, was the first time what someone actually uh, introduced the, the, the use of the gloves uh, in training and in fighting, mm. and they use boxing techniques. But I think the main uh, influence for Sabat, at least the way it evolves um, in its first stages, is fencing. Uh, fencing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, interesting, interesting. So this was the first exposure to martial arts you had, Sabat? Um, no, actually, I was exposed to uh, Shotokan Karate. Oh, I had okay. a cousin who, uh, uh, that I uh, had a chance to um, spend the summer with, and, and um, you know, he taught me some uh, forms and um, nunchak as mm. well. And then I uh, did some judo mm. after that. And, but Sabat, uh, in terms of uh, long-term practice, that's really the first system that I uh, had a chance to uh, practice. And I, I stuck with it, and I, you know, really... I think from the very first time, I just um, stuck with it and just kept training and keep keep enjoying it, and mm. and then you know wanting to uh, to compete and teach and complement with boxing and just um, it became a passion. You fell in love with yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, that was like the drive that I had in my life at the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was for yeah. you know for nine years. That's all I did. Mm. Well, there's a ranking system. Uh, absolutely. Can, how can you explain that? So I can explain, I, I can, um, I don't know the, um, the definition of it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I think it, um, in karate, like having the, the white and, and this idea of the, the belt, you know, becoming uh, darker with the use. And we don't really have, like, I, I, I can't really relate to that uh, in Sabat because the colors don't have the same meaning to mm -hmm. me. So, but it starts with uh, blue, then it goes to green, red, white, mm -hmm. yellow, and then the highest technical ranks are silver gloves. Silver gloves. Yeah. And then part of the um, part of the promotion process is probably, you know, actually getting in the ring and sparring, and it's it's a very practical 
uh, art, yeah? Um, yeah, I would say so, um, because uh, in the uh, technical rank, there's always some uh, stereotype combinations, mm. uh, offense, defense, um, and then what we call sparring with him, so kind of what we did today, where mm. you know one person is focusing on one, uh, uh, one technique or combination offensively, mm. while someone else is you know making uh, uh, defensive adjustments with yeah. something specific as well, and then the free sparring like we did at the end. It was, it was so much fun, um, and there was no fear of like, man, am I gonna, you know? We we had some some really talented people in there today, you yeah. know, and they were all really uh, cool people, you know. And of course, you know, Kufil was in the in the in the class as well, and everybody was just you know relaxed and you know gentle, uh, you know. But we were all sweating, we were all working. It was so much fun. But I, I really like that way of training. It just takes, a, you know, it just makes it, it's like, oh, this is so much fun. <laughs> so enjoyable, you know, and then the time just flew, you know, it was Good. like, oh, wow, it's, <laughs> you know, we're like, we're almost done here, you know. Um, a, a different way of kicking, a, a different way of moving, and I definitely am interested in, in continuing my study with this. Great. Yeah. I'm yeah. ready. I'm here. <laughs> Savard has, has de declined in popularity, or um, it seems like not as many people know about it anymore. Um, you know, maybe since the rise of MMA, or you know, I'm not quite sure why, but um, I, I think it's important that you know you're continuing to, you know, to spread the art, you know, and, and have find people who are interested in, in practicing it as well, you know, because I think it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can deny that. I mean, it's it's you know it's my uh, it's one of my passion definitely, and so not seeing it grow the way I expected when I first came in this country mm -hmm. uh, to to be what it was, and and you know seeing it grow to a certain level, and then kind of you know seeing the interest uh, dropping. Mm. Um, we had some really really good moments. Um, I think the the highlights were. Uh, 2006 uh, Light Contact World Championship, where we had a team of, um, I think we had like 13 people going to uh, Europe, and mm. we made like six medals as a mm. team. So mm. that was something that I was very, very, uh, very happy with. I think we had a good um, uh, emulation with um, different places in the United States, really working together to try to uh, to build, and then. I don't know what happened. I mean, I know that you know I, I stepped down from trying to coordinating everybody working together, hoping that um, you know people would be able to uh, take over and build from that. Mm. I haven't seen the same uh, interest, unfortunately, um, and I found that very disappointing mm. um, because I think it deserves a much better exposure. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were teaching for a while at um, Mr. Ino Santos Academy, right? How did you meet him? Um, well, I got lucky enough to um, have the chance to work with one of his um, uh, instructors, mm. um, full instructor, uh, Chad Stahelski. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then Eric Paulson, and then Damon Caro, and uh, uh, Ron Baliki. So mm. all those guys. I came at a time at the academy where, you know, Fia Aslaxen was, uh, was there as well, where we had all those people that um, were just like we were working together, we had you know those couple of classes with uh, Chad. Chad wanted me to to teach with him, but it didn't call that a class. It just wanted this to be like a session for people who wanted to train like fighters, mm -hmm. uh, and the one interested in fighting could you know make the transition to uh, to the ring. And you know we, we had a pretty good team that we were coaching. Uh, Ron Baliki was fighting. Um, Eric Paulson was fighting, um, so they were fighting in different style, shoot wrestling, and and, uh, and Chad was fighting in uh, Savada at the time I met him. Mm. So he invited me to uh, the academy and introduced me to uh, Guru Dan, and, mm. and you know, it was one of the best, um, you know, memory. I, I never expected, um, you know, when I came to this country to actually um, have a chance to meet him, even though, you know, it's the game of death was, <laughs> I mean, like yeah. he was the man, and you for know, sure, and, for uh, sure. You know, coming from France, I mean, definitely, you know, someone that uh, you consider as a, an idol, and mm. when you get to uh, meet him, it's just. <laughs> and you know, I, I've met a lot of martial artists over the years, uh, as you have, 
and some of them aren't as nice as you would hope they would be when you meet them. Mm -hmm. Now, good old Dan is everything that you hope that he would be. You know, I mean, nice, gracious, um, patient, uh, just so knowledgeable and so humble and always wanting to be a student. And um, you know, definitely one of my, uh, my heroes, you know. Uh, oh, and, <laughs> and so many good people have come through, you know, good old Dan. You know, I got a chance to study with him for only three months, but he's um, so many, so many great martial artists. You know, the ones that you mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, Ted Sahelski has gone on to do, you know, you know John Wick and, and, yeah. and a ton of other stuff, and Damon Caro, who, you know, has become, you know, a great you know, stunt coordinator and fight choreographer, and then Ron Balicki is tough as nails, you yeah. know, and then Eric Paulson, forget about it, you know, yeah. that, that guy would just, you know, mess you up with jujitsu wrestling and, you know, and shoot wrestling and whatever else, you know, and then, you know, uh, of course, Crufil, and, you know, I mean, the list goes on and on, you know, and, and just so many good people, you know. Um, it, it's just amazing. I think yeah. that's the mark of, of um, you know, someone who uh, just loves to share his, his passion and, mm. and people just, you know, catching on and, yeah. and he, you know, he's, he's, he's a giving person. So, it, you know, anything you want, that's, that's all he wants is to, to give his, and, and, uh, his knowledge. And, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's been an incredible experience to have the chance to uh, to meet him, to meet him, and mm. you know, stay close enough so I can go see him. And mm. and he's always, always has a nice, uh, you know, word for for everybody. I mean, he never bad mouths anybody. Yeah. Never, you know, I've, it just it, it won't come out of his mouth. No, you know, he's always. always it's just his perspective on on life and and yeah. people is just. I mean, like even that. people who have burned him, you know, maybe former yeah. students, you know, and you know, I mean, but he doesn't. No, he doesn't go. Doesn't there. play that game. That's amazing. Yeah, it you know? is. Because <laughs> I, I don't know if I would, uh, I don't know if I would have the, you know, the, 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 <laughs> the fortitude to do that. I would just be like, oh, I you. What would, I what you. would Girl Dan do? You know. Yeah. Um, but what is it that brought you uh, to the United States from France? What was. Um, what brought me, so at the time I was competing, I mean, I, I really, like, competition was for me a way to, uh, um, gain confidence to uh, to move on. I went, it, it was it was a step in my life. Um, I didn't know. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with mm. it. Um, I knew that um, I enjoyed teaching it, uh, which I was doing before before I left France. Uh, but no, what got me here is the desire to open my mind to a different side of the world and, mm. and different uh, cultures and. And I wanted to, um, you know, move here because it was so close to Mexico, and I, I liked the Latin culture as well. Yeah, and yeah. I thought it was a good mix, and just happened to uh, meet someone who was from Mexico, living here, and we got married and mm. decided to. Um, well, we decided to move here first uh, because she's from Long Beach, uh, and then, uh, to me, um, I mean, that was the person that you know I, I thought uh, wanted to live my life with, mm. and everything came from there. Mm. Um, so. You know, I tried to work, I realized that, you know, one of the best skills that I had was to teach martial arts, so I had a chance to uh, get started. And, you know, thank you to uh, Francis Echina, who was another one of um, Guru Dan's uh, student and full instructor, who had a place and uh, who really helped me with all those connections. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, so I met him, I met uh, Salam Asli, who I, I didn't train with, but uh, mm. we worked together to create the association, mm. you know, and I, I, of course, I've, you know, you have to have a thought for, for him and knowing that uh, he passed away too, yeah. too early, he had so much just, to, uh, just to recently, share. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. so mm. dramatic, yeah. um, so sad. So it's, yeah, it's definitely have a, you know, thought for, for him. For sure, um, for sure. But, um, you know, being being there at that time, and so you know, Francis introduced me, and um, so he had a place, and and he actually moved to a different location. Asked me if I wanted to take over, and you know, with the support of Chad, very close to the academy, I'm like, okay, why not? Uh, you know, um, definitely, um, it's easier and more exciting than to work in construction, <laughs> which. Um, and so, you know, I just started to teach and from, I just got the ball rolling and, mm -hmm. and through the academy, I have, you know, more exposure and more clients and more mm -hmm. classes and, and did that full time for, 
quite a few years. You're teaching elementary school now, right? Yep. Uh, the, what, what was it, Vendine School? What school was you? Where are you? Fern Elementary. Fern Elementary. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what what grade is that? Fifth, fifth, fifth grade fifth this year. Fifth grade. Yeah. That, that's a good age. It is. Yeah. That must be very gratifying. And you know, I think I think that's an amazing. You know, teachers are amazing. You know, um, you know, I'm a martial arts instructor, and I, I have kids for 45 minutes. Yeah. You know, you have kids all day long. You know. Uh, yeah, that's not easy. <laughs> you know? But I think you don't you don't give yourself enough credit. I mean, you, you have the chance to work with kids. Yeah, you have them forty five minutes, but yeah, you teach them like um, you know uh, lifelong uh, skills, and you have them for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, as teachers, I, I feel like we don't spend enough time uh, with the kids. And mm. there's, um, I think, you have uh, like a degree of, of um, guidance with the kids that, you know, is, is, I don't know if it's better, but it's, it's definitely beneficial in, in a lot of different ways. And um, when you say you're an instructor, you're a teacher. <laughs> That's where you are, okay? And uh, mm. it's, um, and I can tell you one thing, is my experience teaching martial arts definitely made me a better teacher than I would have ever been if I didn't have this experience. Mm. Uh, because I don't think that's, you know, it's, it's, you have a goal when you teach, right? Uh, whether it's in a dojo or in a classroom, mm. uh, you put up situations to make sure that you reach this goal. You yeah. make adjustments, you know, for the kids that, uh, that do it well. You, um, you, you give something more for the kids who, you know, who, who need more. Um, and so it's, I know that my experience as a martial instructor definitely helped me uh, in a classroom. What do you think the greatest thing you've ever learned from martial arts is? What's your, what do you think your greatest lesson is? Confidence. Confidence. Yeah. yeah. Confidence to understand that uh, when you work for something, when you put effort uh, in it, and you give yourself the necessary discipline to go along with it, uh, then you can, you can reach the, you know, I mean, any goal that you set, as long as it's reasonable. Um, you know, yeah, setting up goals, I think, was the one thing that got me on the right track at the time where I really didn't know what I was going to do. Mm. Um, I just got lucky to, you know, find an instructor that was motivating and, you know, you can relate to that. If sure. you, you have, you know, thousands of students that uh, look up to you and, and you know how much you change them for the better. So that's, that's what I got from uh, martial arts. Uh, and yeah, I wouldn't be the person you know, I am today if, if it wasn't for this experience, for sure. Martial arts can change your life. It ch certainly changed my life for the better. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, 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 I owe so much to the martial arts. And, and I can see that you do as well. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Let's say uh, this was you know, your last day on Earth. What would be one lesson that you would want to impart to your students or, you know, um, hey guys, please remember this. What would that be? Enjoy what you do right now. Mm. Like just take the most life as you can. And, you know, I, I think that's, that's what I'm trying to convey when, when I teach. Like I want people to have fun. If that's the last time you do Sabbath, uh, then make sure that, you know, you come out with, um, with, with something positive and, you know, a great feeling about yourself mm. uh, doing it and, and having fun doing it. And, and of course, if you have fun doing something and you do it with, um, you know, with the self-discipline and, and the intensity that you need, you, you, you'll get something out of mm. it. So, um, yeah, just remembering that you know, it's, it's, you have this opportunity to be there at this moment. Might not happen again. Mm. So enjoy, you know, the best you can. You know, I think that's, uh, that's how I've, I've, I've taken those experiences that I've had with, uh, with people, you know, first at the academy, but also when I, you know, have the chance to meet people like you. Mm. Uh, it's make the best you can out mm. of the situation because, you know, it, it happens for whatever reason at the time being and, and you never know. So... Right. No regret. Do no the regret. best you can, <laughs> what you can. Well, we certainly had a great time today, and we were so um, fortunate. It was a small group, and we 
we're just like, oh, this is, you know, we're just so lucky. You know, we got a uh, professor and we, you know, we, we had, uh, you, you were able to work with us one-on-one. -on -one. That is a, um, I think that's a rare opportunity and, you know, thank you so much for doing that. And I really appreciate you actually sitting down with me and, and, and doing an, an episode of 52 Masters. We really appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you so much. <laughs> no, it's, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure to teach to you, um, you know, and you have the chance to see it. I mean, I, I had the chance to see it and, and see how much, uh, um, you know, how good it was for, for people to have, you know, conversation at this, uh, you know, it's, it's, look, it's just like a fun conversation to have about something that we share. Yeah, So for sure. You know, it's a family. And, yeah, you know, and, absolutely. And now we're brothers. <laughs> thank you so much. So once again, thank you so much, Professor. This has been Professor Nicolas with Savat. I'm William Christopher Ford, 52 Masters, and we'll see you next time.